Hey folks, I'm Rich Folley. This is PBS Book View Now. We're at the Miami Book Fair 2016. It's a beautiful Miami day. And we are sitting right now with Matthew Reinhardt, who is the pop-up master. So many books, so many that are probably on your shelves right now if you have children out there. Star Wars, Game of Thrones, my personal favorite, I think. Cinderella, cool. My Little Pony, uh, the Lego one that's sitting here, and a brand new one. Frozen. Frozen, yes. And everybody who knows, you know, these books knows that, like, you know, you open a Matthew Reinhardt book and they sort of explode out into the world. Well, yeah, that's what we want to do. Like, I want to, I want to make something, I want you to be surprised on every single page. It's, it's amazing. And this is more than just a pop-up, obviously. You're a paper engineer. Yes. I've seen some videos and I've seen some of your work and how you put it all together, but sort of figuring out how paper folds and where the bends and bows are and figuring out how to make it go higher and higher and higher out of the book. Yeah, really yeah, speaking out. of, yeah, like <laughs> something like this. Yeah, it's, it's a long process. Like that gets super tall, Yeah. right? <laughs> um, so something like this, you know, a book like this will probably take me about five to six months, you yeah. know, from, from the initial concept to, you know, final version. And the beginning after, you know, of course, writing the, the words because the story is the most important. The next step is doing the paper engineering. And so you make it sound so technical, but really it's just like me in my studio cutting and folding paper and figuring out like how all these things go together. And it's just like a big mess. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my friends will often say my job is, is arts and crafts, really, because that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm just building stuff and seeing how it works. You know, you talk about it not being all like Pop-ups have come such a long way since I was a kid. I mean, well, it used to be yeah. you opened a book and there was a cool thing a and it thing. was awesome. And actually, that was when I was a kid, it was amazing that they actually popped up. But now the layers and the detail and the structure, I mean, it's become something much bigger, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Been, it's been great. I mean, I, I just try with, with my work... I, I don't necessarily want to make something that is just like, you know, enormous. I want to make something that works with the story and is exciting, you know? Uh, uh, and, and, you know, there's a lot to compete with, you mm -hmm. know, with video games and everything like that. And, and so, you know, you want to make something that really pulls in the reader that, or, you know, pokes them in the eye. Um, and you want to make <laughs> something, you know, that is really exciting on the page. Yeah. And I would get bored if I was making the same things over and over again. So I'm always trying to make something different and new. So it's one of those things where you give, uh, uh, I have so many of these books in my house, as I mentioned. Um, I have four kids at home, and we've yeah. gone through a number of your books. Mm -hmm. And literally, we go through them. We need to get a new one. Because <laughs> after a while, you know, you just want to get in oh, there. Oh, well, yeah. You want to well, play with happens. these things. And like, you know, you're, you're, you know, you treat these things like the beautiful artwork that they are, but they're also kids reading these yeah. books. Yeah, and you know what? That's what they do. I mean, the, my first, my only pop-up book growing up was a dinosaur pop-up. I ended up making one, of course, many years ago. They did really well. But um, my dinosaur book that I had was completely destroyed. My sister got a hold of it, like, I don't know, an hour after I got the book. And so growing up, I only remember that one really sad you know, pop up less pop up book, <laughs> yeah. you know? So making you mine now, I know that that's what kids do. They get in there and they rip it. And, you know, we try, I try my best to make stuff that's, that's strong, but it, it is know, durable. It yeah. The fact that we have so many of them that still exist and are still, you know, hanging yeah. tough years and years and years later, <laughs> yeah. I think is testament. But let's talk too about the fact that, <coughs> excuse me, for Disney, you get to do things like Frozen. Yeah. You get to do things like Star Wars. You mm -hmm. get to do things like these amazing franchises where, not only is it fun for you as a fan, but there's a responsibility to some of these, oh, these fans. You, who you don't even know. Like, you know, so I'm a super hardcore Star Wars fan. You know, I've been since when I was young. And when I approached uh, Lucasfilm about doing that first Star Wars book, you know, it was like religion. You know, go in there and, you know, you have to do everything right. And I would call them up and even ask, like, oh, you know, this alien, what's the lower part of his body look like? Because I might show it, and you know, you want to make sure that everything is right. And it's the same with Frozen. It's the same with any of the things that I do. I'm like, I become, I try to become a, as much of an expert as I can mm -hmm. about that subject. And you know, if you knew, like I was hearing that, that song in my head at night doing the Frozen book, like it was constant. But yeah. it's really important because- You have to live in that world. You have to, if you don't, you know, the, the, the fans will know. And I would be disappointed myself if I didn't know it. Like, look, I've done My Little Pony. I became a brony. <laughs> there you go. For six months. Like, I was, I read all, you, you know, I watched all. You become a brony for six months. Well, you, for, for life, life, for life. I'm a brony for life. No, I really actually am. But it's, but I'm into these things. Like, I really am. I'm a fan and I'm a total geek. And I, you know, all these different characters, they're, they're important to someone. And it's important for me to be able to portray them. 
correctly. So when you put these books together, you do this like this one master, this first one that becomes mm -hmm. like sort of your prototype and, and you know what you want it to do. Take us for people who don't understand the whole process. How mm -hmm. do you get from that to mass production where you, it just has to, everything has to work right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're doing one that's all manual. I mean, you're cutting mm -hmm. and you're using your exacto. How do you get it from that point to where you're, you're printing 10,000 of these or yes. like 20,000 or 100,000? Yeah, well, so, okay, so the whole process starts out, you know, I'm engineering all the pops, and once they're designed, you know, when, by hand, no computer program or anything like that. Um, the next step is tracing all those pieces and refining that pop-up over and over again. You know, something like this, this pop, I may have bu built this at least 15 to 20 times um, before I got it just right. So once all those pieces are made and they're all refined, all, all, they're all traced, um, I'll give those, those piece shapes and all the artwork and send it to the manufacturer and they will they will start making prototypes. And throughout the entire time that it's being manufactured, and it's all handmade, like all of these books, each one of them has to be hand assembled. So um, they are sending me prototypes and I'm, I'm checking them, making sure everything works right. So it's, it's you know, over at least six to eight months that I'm making sure that all this stuff is being done right. So it kind of goes from my hands to their hands building it mm -hmm. and then to, to the readers, so the bookstores. Now that you, they, they come out, you get your first one, you go through it. These kids now, you, you know when you've sort of made something that these kids are going to love. You have to know, like, and especially as they get taller and taller. Yeah. Um, you, know, you, you, you know the pages that are going to be the ones where their eyes dazzle. Yeah. yeah, because I get excited. Yeah, I mean, it's I, like a big reveal. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It, it's weird. It's, um, it, it, it's one of those jobs where you really get to live uh, like a kid. A lot, you know, what excites you? Or what is, you know, what parts of the story are really, really fun? What, what do you want to focus on? Mm -hmm. um, it's great. I mean, I, I guess I live as, as sort of a, a big kid. Yeah, so when, you, I, I've, I've heard stories about when you first jumped into this, and, and I know that you didn't originally, I mean, it was a, it was a you were always artistic, obviously, mm -hmm. but you were looking at doing something oh, yeah. in the medical profession, and yeah, you decided yeah. to somehow so I have throw a really that aside. Yeah, so I have a really bizarre background. So I studied biology or originally because my parents were like, well, you're not going to really make any money being an artist. And um, I didn't know enough at the time. So I, I always had my artwork on the side. And it wasn't until I came to New York and, and I actually worked with another illustrator, uh, Robert Sabuda, who I, I, I partnered with on a lot of books, that I realized that hey, this is something that I can do. And, I, 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 you know, it, it took, you know, being thrown into the fire. You know, you're making some of these books. And this is even, even before I had, had signed any of my first books, I was helping him with his projects. And the deadlines were incredible. You're always like, you have to learn this fast. You have to do this fast. As I was, you know, when I, when I sold my first book, I had no idea what I was doing. I was making it up. And I, 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 to be honest, I feel like I'm still doing that. Like I'm constantly learning. That's the big secret. From what I do. That's, if, you, if you ever think that you have the answer and this is the, the, the way, then you've, you've flatted out. Like you, you've plateaued. Like you have to continue to be, to be open to learning more. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what this job is. Well, it's inspiring to know that like, even though it seemed like there's no potential path, you know, a career path mm -hmm. in that world that you were naturally drawn to, that yeah. it unfolded for you. I mean, literally yeah. and, and, and... Yeah, and, quite, yeah. yes. <laughs> Sorry for the that, pun. There was a pun. But, yeah, it, but it. it happened, and it was yeah. something that you knew, and you just had that feeling that that was down there, and there was a, there was a jump, there was a leap there. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was scary, and, you know, when you work for yourself, you know, you're not working for a job, you, you, know, you really think, okay, now what's the next project, what's this, and that? but, you know, I go to work every day, and it is hard, but it is fun. Yeah. Well, when you're sitting, no matter how hard Lucasfilm folks can be on you. The they're actually a, really, they're really great to deal with. It's, you know, other people that yeah. like <laughs> We won't know that. <laughs> but we do know how important these things are to the people that obviously love them. They're, they're, they're protecting those, those, those experiences that mm -hmm. people have with these books that you're writing about now. And it's a wonderful thing that you're able to get in there and make that come alive for people in ways that a lot of books can't do exactly the way you do. And it's well, an art you. form of the highest order. And I can't wait to see where you go next. But There's Frozen is cool certainly going to get people excited. Yeah, it definitely. It's, it's been fun. But uh, I love what I do. So Frozen Lego, sure. can you tell us where else you're going? Okay, so I am. Yes, I'm actually working on um, a... So I'm, I'm going to be doing some work with, with Disney for a while. And uh, I'll be doing the Pixar celebration. So it's 
a, a moment from every Pixar movie since the very beginning. Wow. So that's what I'm working on right now, and I'm behind. Um, but you have to throw some Easter eggs in there. For oh, those. there will be. Okay. There will be, because I know that there's, there's a whole, there's a whole um, inside joke about all the, 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 the different movies and how they're supposed to be played. So yeah. that's part of it. I'm doing a history of Mickey Mouse in a couple years, which I cannot wait for because um, he's an icon. And I'm um, also doing something, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Very uh, nice. In the future. So there's a lot. All right. Well, we're, we're thrilled that you're here. It's Thank a really you. impressive career. Matthew Reinhardt. Thank you. Your newest, latest pop-up yes. extraordinaire is Frozen. Yes. Many more to come, obviously. It's so cool to have you. Thank you Good so luck. much. And, and I'm so awesome. impressed with everything you do. Uh, Thanks very much. Thank you.